Are you struggling to make money quickly and efficient in GTA Online? Do you feel like you don't really know what you're doing? Then fear not. If you follow this guide, you will go from a broke homeless to a mastermind criminal with an empire of illegal businesses, high-end properties, $10 million yacht, golden planes, penthouses, and so much more you only dreamt of doing in GTA. You will go from zero to millions of dollars. You don't even know where to spend. Hello, my name is Alkaline Expert, and this is my money guide. I made this video because other guides seems to be just boring and repetitive and takes too long to accomplish. And it has come out loads of new content since the last good money guide, which makes them outdated. But this guide takes all the newest content in GTA and uses it to make money more efficient than ever before. When I bought GTA for Xbox One, I got it on a discount and I actually got the criminal enterprise package included. A bigger scam I haven't seen in my life. You don't have to buy either shark cards or the criminal enterprise package. You might be thinking that you're just busy at work or with school and don't have time to grind all day to earn money for that supercar, jet or maybe that arena car you really want. But just relax, with this guide money won't be a problem in your GTA future. I will assume you started the game with a bank account of zero dollars. However, if you started out with some money, this guide will work just as well. There are many different ways to make money, as you probably know. This is my opinion on what I think is the best and most efficient way to do it. I might not cover all of it, but if you think I left something out or you like to do it in a different way, feel free to leave a comment where you explain it. And I will add what was left out in the description. And if you find the video interesting and want to see more from me, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let's start out with the arcade. If you have the money for it, buy the arcade located at La Mesa for $1.8 million. I will come back to this later, but what we will do next is to get the money for the arcade if you started out broke. So if you can't afford the arcade, I recommend you start by doing the heists to, to save up. I recommend you do the classic heists so you can save up for the arcade. To do this, you need to be ranked 12 and have $217,000 so you can buy the high-end apartment located at Alta Street. To get this amount of money, I recommend you do dispatch missions, semen repo missions or whatever the current week featured missions of the week are, as they usually give you double or even triple money. You may also get a message with a location. This is a treasure hunt. After you complete tr the treasure hunt and get 50 headshots with the revolver, you should get 250k. Link in the description for how you can do the tre treasure hunt. There is also a similar mission from mod where you will get a tomahawk. And 50 kills with the tomahawk, or the stone hatchet as it is called, will give you an additional $250,000. Okay, let's get back to the heist. Once you have your apartment and are ready to do the heist, you might be wondering, why is no one joining me? Or I don't have any friends to play with. Personally, all of my friends in GTA are people I have met in the game. On Xbox, which is what I am using, there is a looking for group section. And I have never encountered a single time when no one has joined me. At least after some minutes. So as long as you are specific about what you want to do, you will usually get people joining you. I don't know how it works for PlayStation or PC, but I assume it works in a sim similar way. If not, there is a website called GTA LFH uh, where you also can recruit players to whatever you like. Link in description. Now it is important that you complete all the heists in order as the host. Also, when you're doing the heist, it is important you give yourself at least 40% of the total cut in the finales. This is because you don't get paid during setups, but your crew members get paid. You also have to pay for both the, the apartment and the upfront costs of doing the heist. Therefore, you need more money. If your crew help you uh, do setups, then give them 20%, as that is the fairest cut. 
On the Frisa job, however, I recommend you take 60% at least, as this is just a two player heist. And doing all the heists in order with the 40% cut will give you around two and a half million dollars. A little tip to do the heist is to do the setups on easy or normal, as you don't have a lot of weapons and guns yet, and do the heist on the hard difficulty. And once you finish with the heist, I know it is tempting to use that money on nice cars and outfits, but don't do that yet, this is very important. Do not spend your money yet, we are going to invest this money into better and faster ways to make money. So save your money for now and use it on the arcade. Okay, so we have done all the heists and you have over 2 million dollars in your bank account, it is time to invest. The arcade you want is located at the east side of the map, right below the casino, and it goes for 1.8 million dollars and has a great location. Don't use your money on cosmetics such as colors or sleeping quarters. You can buy the sleeping quarters if you want to spawn inside the arcade, but you don't really have to right now. Another reason I like this, there are some preps in Palido Bay, but that is just one or two out of usually at least eight preps. So save up and get the one at La Mesa, you won't regret it, ever. Now that you own the arcade, it is time to do the casino heist. I recommend you register as a VIP to do the preps. For this you will need to have 50k in your bank account, but you won't lose it when you register. Or you can buy the cheapest MC clubhouse at Maze Bank for closures for around 200k. You will have to buy it for the later steps anyways, so if you have the money for it, you can buy it now, however VIP works just fine for now. The first thing you're going to do is some setup missions for the arcade. Once that is complete, you are going to scout out the casino. If you are wondering how to scout out the casino, I have a video for that, link in description. The important entrances are the sewer and the security entrance. I recommend doing preps in an invite only lobby as that has fast loading times and only players you have invited to the session is inside the session so you can avoid getting exploded by oppressor mark 2s. You will know what I mean after 2 minutes in a full public lobby. After you have scouted out the casino it is time to choose the approach you are doing. I recommend you do your first heist with the aggressive approach. This is because you will get cash as your first target and it is your first heist so this will give you a good idea how the heist works. Another bonus is that you won't need to hack the vault doors in aggressive mode as you have thermal charges. Now it is time to choose your crew. If you don't have unlocked Packy as your gunman, I would say use the cheapest gunman and use the shotgun loadout. Your driver should also be the cheapest one and get the Sultan Classic as your car. Your hacker should almost always be top notch especially your first times, as this gives you more time to grab the loot. So invest in a better hacker, since you need all the time you can get. Some preps are easier to do solo than others. If you press the info button on the preps, it says on the left side of the screen how many people are recommended for that prep. If it says one, it is usually one thing you need to collect. If it says two plus players, there are usually two things you have to collect. Or more. One special mention is the Duggan shipments. Here you have to go all around the map and destroy 10 vehicles. The vehicles can be cars or helicopters and this is something I strongly recommend you get other people for as it is no way you can do this by yourself as, an, as a new player in the game. And the more vehicles you destroy the weaker the guards inside the casino gets and if you're going in aggressive this is essential for a new player. And the preps I don't recommend you do the first times to save time are security intel, patrol routes and wall drills. If you don't manage to get all enemies on the Duggan shipments then I recommend you get reinforced armor. And there is also a bug in the game where you don't need to do the boring machine prep to enter through the sewers. So if you don't want to exploit bugs then do the prep but you don't really need to do it as of right now. The last prep mention is that you can upgrade your getaway cars by entering them in your arcade. When you go aggressive, I find it extremely helpful to get bulletproof tires for both cars, especially if you're using 4 players in the finale, and it only costs 10k for each car. Ok, so you have done all the necessary preps and are ready to rob the casino. For your first time, get 4 people 
uh, since you have cash at your target. And hopefully they help you with the preps. As mentioned earlier, GTA, LFH or the looking for groups functions are really helpful for this. Give new players 15% as that is the lowest cut and give people who helped you 20%. So you end up with at least 40%. Remember, you have you had to pay for both the arcade and the upfront cost of the of the heist, and you had to upgrade the getaway cars. Don't forget, so you should get at least forty percent. Enter through the sewers, as this is easiest, and exit through the the staff door, so you don't have to search your way through the vast areas of the casino with guards constantly respawning, any first time doing the heist. And when you exit, I recommend going straight for your cars and heading to the sewers, as this will make you lose as little money as possible. You can go for the chopper, but that might be a little hard for your first time and potentially make you get killed or lose more cash than necessary. Finally, you are finished and you see the pay is just 600k. Fear not, your later heist will give you more when you do different targets such as artwork, gold or even diamonds. There is also a hard mode which gives 10% more. So your first time you won't get that much money, but your later times you will get more. Now it is time to wait a little for Lester to send a message stating the casino is possible to rob again. So head back and set it, set it up for the big con. Choose the cheapest gunman driver, but invest in the hacker, top notch, remember? The optional preps you should do are group sex, news outfit or firefighter outfits, or if you collected all the 54 playing cards, use the high roller outfit. And the other prep you should do is vault key cards level 2. Not level 1, as they are completely useless, in my opinion at least. Use the right d-pad to change it to level 2 before you launch the prep, so you will get a warning screen which asks you which level you want to get if it is level 1 or level 2. And for the big con, you don't have to do dug and shipments, as you will sneak your way through the casino. If you are wondering how to do the big con, I have a walkthrough in the description. Just remember to exit the vault before the timer hits zero, as that raises the alarm. After you do the big con, I recommend you go and do the aggressive heist again, and then the big con after you do the aggressive. So you do heist you're used to, and you get a 10% bonus from every time you do the heist. And you can do the sell the sneaky, and after you've done the aggressive big con, and then do the sell the sneaky, you will get a potential 500k bonus from awards if you manage to sneak your way through the casino in the Sullen Sneaky. And the awards are complete all three different approaches and complete the Sullen Sneaky undetected. So you can do the Sullen Sneaky after the big con and then never return to it, <laughs> as GTA wasn't really made for sneaking. You don't have to do four people every time you do the heist. I usually do two people with artwork and three people with gold and diamonds. And if you haven't done the casino store missions, which you need a penthouse to do, then you can't get the security intel prep, which gives you the, all the camera locations and directions. This is really useful for when you are going in sneaky and you need to know which ways the cameras are pointing. So if you have the money for it, you can buy the casino penthouse, but don't do that yet. Just follow these steps right for now. Another mention is that when you do the big con and sudden sneaky, you need to know how to hack the fingerprints. There are tutorials on YouTube how to do this, and you can purchase the fingerprint hacker for 425k on your setup board in your arcade if you want to practice before you go in with the big con or sudden sneaky. Um, I really recommend you practice your fingerprint hacking before you go in with the big con, um, as you will have to hack uh, at least one door to get to the loot. There are always four doors inside the vault which needs to be opened by either thermal charges or by hacking it. After doing the casino heist a few times, you should have some money. Now it is time to invest some more. More specifically, you want to invest in more ways to make money. Even more specifically, you will invest in a bunker. Buy the bunker at Chumash. Again, you might ask, but expert, the one at Palito Bay is still cheaper. I don't have that much money. My response is, save up your money and buy the bunker at Chumash, because it is a great location and it is not too expensive. You know, the bunker in Palito Bay, you don't want to have that one. Please, just, just take my word for it. You don't want to drive down all the map when, you, when you're selling. Just please trust me on this. Okay? <laughs> when the bunker in Palito Bay might not be expensive, 
the upgrades are always expensive. The upgrades are the staff and equipment upgrades. There are also security upgrades, but you don't need to buy that yet. The staff and equipment upgrades, you won't get the refund once you buy them. So if you change your bunker, you will lose that money. So buy the right bunker the first time you buy it. And as I said, you don't need a security upgrade yet. You can get that once you have followed all the steps in the video. Remember to set your staff to manufacturing, not research or both, as you need to make money for now. You can change it when you have completed the guide and have enough money and you want to do the research. There is no differences between staff and equipment upgrades, except for the price. Therefore, buy whichever you can afford first, and buy the second one once you can afford it. I recommend you buy supplies and you might like, say, but expert, that is 75k! If I resupply myself, I will save that. Yeah, that might be true, but you could use your time more efficient because a resupply mission takes some time and you don't even get a full bar of supplies. Usually, you get one bar for every crate you collect, whereas buying supplies always gives you the maximum amount of supplies possible. While your business produces, it is time to earn some more money. I see two possibilities. Either keep doing heist, casino heist that is, on aggressive and big con, back to back so you get your 10% hard bonus. The reason I recommend aggressive over sullen and sneaky is it is faster to set up and easier to not fail on the finale. You will know what I mean when you do it yourself. The other way to make money while you wait for your bunker is to buy the penthouse. You don't need any upgrades and you want to do the story missions for Agatha Baker. The first time you do each you get a little bonus, so it is worth doing the story missions at least once. After doing all of the missions you will also get a nice car at the end. But uh, now you can also do the security interprep so you know where the cameras are for when you are sneaking. And I recommend you do the security interprep because you won't have to do that again. You will always have the cameras unlocked after you do that prep one time. And you should not replay the casino store missions after completion as it won't give you the cash bonus by the second time you do the mission. Just do the casino heist more and as you probably get the hang of the casino heist missions you will do it faster and you might have someone to help you and make some friends while you do this. Remember to have someone to help you do the preps so you're more efficient. And remember to go back to your bunker every two and a half hours to refill it and sell it once it is full. You need two to three other players to sell a full business. Again, use GTA LFH or the looking for group page when you want to sell your businesses. You get more money by selling in populated lobbies but you're also a target on other players' maps. So if you want to sell in a solo session, I recommend selling in solo your first times, just so you know how you do it. And if you want to sell solo, you can go to your network settings and press the test net type. This will give you a solo public session, which is great for selling your cargo with the lowest risk possible. Once your bunker has staff and equipment upgrades, it is time to go to our next step, which is... MC businesses. No, you need an MC clubhouse. The cheapest one will do, as it is close to your future MC businesses. I won't go too much into detail here, but I will leave a link that tells you everything you need to know about money making in, on the MC and the bunker. Okay, so back to the MC. You want to upgrade your MC businesses before you buy the next business so you don't get overwhelmed by all the different locations you have to go to for resupplying by all the business expenses. I don't recommend locations in Palido Bay or the city because Palido Bay is too far away from the city and the city gives you really bad and spread out locations when you're selling. The locations I recommend have great and compact locations for selling. They are also close to each other which is really useful for when you're doing resupply runs. The first one you want to buy is the cocaine business, buy the one located at Alamo C. The second one you want to buy is the counterfeit cash factory, located at Grand Sonoro Desert. The third one you want to buy is the weed business, this is located on San Chinaski mountain range. The fourth one you want to buy is meth, located at Grand Sonoro Desert. 
the final MC business you want to buy is the document forgery. However, I don't recommend you buy it as it is not really worth it. But if you really want to buy it, then you can buy the one located at Grapeseed. Remember to buy the staff and equipment upgrades for your MC business before you buy the next one. Also remember to buy supplies and do other activities to make money while you wait for your businesses to fill up. You need to resupply each business every two and a half hours, same as the bunker, because that's how long time it uses all the supplies to make stock. You might want to sell solo, I don't really recommend you sell the entire business by yourself as you usually get the three or four uh, vehicles you have to deliver and you don't really have time to drive all the way back up the map to do it. But if you want to sell solo against my advice then I recommend selling when the stock is around 25% full or one quarter. After you have upgraded your MC businesses it is time to move to our next step. But before I do that I have a special mention. That is the Master Control Terminal or MCT for short. You can buy this in your arcade for around 1.7 million. Just go into your computer in your arcade basement. And with this master control terminal, you can manage all your different businesses without going to them. However, I recommend traveling to the specific business when you're selling from it, except for the nightclub, as that is usually really close to your arcade. Speaking of which, that is our next step. The nightclub. The locations I don't recommend you get are the ones at the bottom of the map. Invest in something further up the map, as that gets you closer to your cell location. There are many upgrades for the nightclub, so don't ship out on the location here. Buy the one location you want. More expensive is usually better with a nightclub. And with the nightclub you want to invest in the extra storage space, staff members, equipment and staff upgrades. The nightclub is a little more complicated business and the basics for the nightclub are as following. It will produce based on your MC businesses. So as long as your MC businesses are producing, uh, that slot in your nightclub will produce. And if your MC business runs out of supplies or gets full and won't produce anymore, that slot in the nightclub won't produce either until you fix your MC business so it starts producing again. I recommend selling your nightclub stock once it is over 1 million, as Tony takes 10% up to $100,000. So everything over 1 million gives you a little more money. And when you sell for 1 million, you will need a bigger vehicle than the one they give you. This is based on how many crates you're selling, but, but the 1 million give, usually gives you the biggest vehicle. You can buy both the mule and the pounder custom uh, to sell with. I don't recommend the mule as it is not fast or have any armor and it is really slow and just annoying to drive. Um, I just buy the pounder custom. You can upgrade it if you want but that is optional. Again just enter the car in your garage and uh, the right d-pad will engage your upgrading system. Um, you don't Again you don't have to upgrade, that, upgrade them but an engine upgrade is always nice. If you didn't know, the nightclub will always give you one vehicle, so we don't need your friends to sell this. You will always get one vehicle to sell with. But you can have your friends in your lobby, so you get the 1% bonus for every person in your lobby that are not in your MC or CEO. The slots you should assign your technicians to are cargo and shipments, sporting goods, South American imports, pharmaceutical research, and cash creations, as these gives you the most money per hour. So if one slot gets full before the other, just go into your nightclub computer and assign your technician to organic produce. The printing and copying slot is dedicated to document forgery, so if you don't own it or have to shut down the business, it will be locked. The same goes for the other slots. The nightclub is a great way to make money, just remember it is linked to your businesses. So don't start out with nightclub, but follow the steps I already explained to make money the most efficient way. Now you should be set up to make lots of more money and you won't really have to struggle to get rich. Just resupply every two and a half hours, remember to buy supplies to save time and money. It is really fast to do it with the master control terminal and sell your business once it is full. 
there are several other ways to make money in the game, but these are the best ways for beginners to make money. Once you have done this, you can start to explore other ways. If you want me to make more videos on how to make money in GTA, please leave a comment and tell me this. And there are, and as I said, there are other ways to make money, and those may include, but they're not limited to, CEO warehouses, vehicle cargo, and the doomsday heists. But this is something you can explore yourself when you have completed my guide. Personally, I think vehicle cargo and warehouses are too repetitive and boring to do. And the same goes with headhunter and sightseer. A uh, noob cannot do headhunter by themselves because the guards have armor and they will shoot back at you and with your micro SMG you won't really have any chance against it. So I don't get why people recommend you do this uh, because I personally I found it a hard time to do it as a noob. And what do you think are the best ways to make money? Uh, tell me in the comments and I will add those to the description if they are good. And if you have any questions to the video, don't forget to ask me in the comments and I will answer you when I have the time for it. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content coming from yours truly expert. And if you liked the video and found it helpful, hit the like button. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.